Let's start integrating JavaScript with our HTML and CSS. The first thing I'll do is create a new project folder, and then I'll open it in Sublime Text. Navigate it to my projects directory, and I'll make a directory called first JavaScript. I've CD'd into that directory, and now I will create a couple files. I'll create index.html, I'll create main.css, and I'll create main.js. JS is the extension type for JavaScript files. Now I'll open this up in Sublime Text. The first thing I want to do is fill the index.html page with our boilerplate. OK, now that I've created our basic boilerplate, I want to include the reference to main CSS and then include the reference to main JavaScript. So here I'm referencing main.css, and CSS links all go in the head of our document. JavaScript links, except for Modernizer, can go below all of your content at the very bottom of the body tag. So to include a script, we'll use the script tag. Which needs an open and closing tag. Now we can put our own JavaScript here if we want to. But we'll be using our external main.js file instead. So I'll empty this out. We still need the open and close tag though, unlike the link tag. Next we'll define a source attribute and set that equal to our main.js file. Now let's open this page up and make sure that it works. We have nothing on the page, so let's open the developer tools and check to make sure that the, page, the files were loaded in. I'll use the network tab to see exactly what content has been loaded. I can see that index.html was successfully loaded, main CSS was successfully loaded, and main JS was successfully loaded. So I know that my page is working correctly. Next, let's put some content in our main.js file and see it in the console. I've opened my main.js file, and let's try the example that we tried before in the browser. I'll set a variable called my name equal to the string Chris. Add the semicolon at the end of the line to terminate the statement. And then let's console log that value. Because we aren't necessarily running this in the console like we were before, we'll need this console log statement to force the browser to print out the value of this variable. All right, let's switch to the browser and see what happens. Reloading the page in console shows the value Chris printed from main.js line two. Now I can click on this link and this will take me exactly to this location in my JavaScript file where the log was made. The variable is also available inside of console by typing my name. 